that has riled everyone from runners and bikers to advocates for the unhoused is getting new life. Last week, St. Louis County Executive nixed the bill to ban people from standing or walking in the street. Tonight, the county council could override that veto. The blue dots that we're going to show you here on this map are just some of the problematic areas that which that bill aimed to address. News source Gabriela Vidal is in Clayton hearing from those in favor and against this, Gabby. Yes, yeah, Sam and Corey, one of the biggest issues is how this bill would impact some of the most vulnerable populations in the county, including the unhoused and those who are disabled, with critics saying that it would target panhandlers and also uh, limit the access that people who are in wheelchairs are able to maybe maneuver onto the roadway to avoid some of the cracked and broken roads that are in the county. But tonight we could hear from the county council on possibly uh, overriding this veto and bringing new life, possibly moving it forward in legislation. Number one is it should never been introduced. It should have been voted down uh, when they when it got to the board. That's been Charles Bryson's position on a bill created to restrict people in unincorporated St. Louis County from walking, sitting, standing or jogging on the roadway. We see in a number of occasions, both in north and in south, but particularly in south St. Louis County, where there are no sidewalks. And that's been the focal point of County Executive Sam Page's decision to ultimately veto the bill and instead suggest County Council work towards providing a system of comprehensive sidewalks all residents can use instead of, quote, punishing residents for walking in the street. Sam Page then should be uh, pointing the finger at himself because that's the first time I've ever heard him express any concern about sidewalks in St. Louis County. Councilman Ernie Trakis authored the bill and shared his frustrations with the county executive's veto with News 4 last week, which he reiterated in a letter ahead of tonight's meeting, questioning why with 16 municipalities in the county that already have a similar pedestrian road bill in the books, the county executive hasn't raised similar opposition. I'm not dismissing the concerns of the disabled community with respect to sidewalks. But any court's going to look at whether or not the legitimate government purpose of the law, in this case, the ordinance, if, if it does have a negative impact on a specific group, the question then becomes, is it reasonable? And I believe it is. The bill initially passed with a vote of four to three among the county council, but it takes five votes to override the county executive's veto, which means anyone who initially didn't support would have to flip. This touches a lot of different groups who say, no, let's veto this bill, then let's sustain the veto, and then let's come back to the table and see how we can work together to improve our sidewalks. Trailnet hopes that if this veto does sustain, that the next steps would be for the county executive to uh, potentially hold meetings with the Transportation and Streets Department, as well as residents in the county, to begin to work on coming up with a path forward to be able to fund for some of these sidewalk improvements that are needed throughout the county. And we'll continue to monitor the outcome of tonight's council meeting, which begins at 630, and provide you the latest updates on air on, and online on, at KMOB.com. Reporting live in Clayton, Gabriella Vidal, News 4. Okay, Gabby, thank you. A news